Sarah Todd slowed down a little bit in her 80s. So I was already 81 when I stopped teaching yoga. You can tell she's pretty pitta. I'm an active grandmother and mother. She's woven many alternative health practices into her life. My astrology chart, three months before I turned 80, I went into a Saturn dasha, which means for 17 years, Saturn is going to have a big influence on my life. Well, Saturn wants you to be disciplined and orderly and take care of things. Todd grew up in the Midwest, lived in Europe, lived in Palo Alto, California, and then moved to Bellingham, Washington at age 71 to be near her two daughters. I've been married twice, been single for a long time. Todd loved the California lifestyle. We lived right on the beach. We all had little sports cars. We were, you know, this was in the 50s. And it was fun. It was really, I met my husband there. He was in the Navy. At that time, most of my friends and myself were at home with our children. We didn't have careers and, and have children at the same time. I love being a mother and being at home and cooking and making my own this and that because it was very creative. This is something that was an awakening for me, like Ayurveda was in a way, because I grew up thinking I wasn't very smart. And when I got to Palo Alto and was in this cooperative nursery school, there were a lot of people there who were Stanford people, and I knew a lot more than they did. I had a lot more common sense than they did. And I could see that I was more open, and I think this is what allowed me to be available to Ayurveda. But Todd's life took a difficult turn when she was afflicted with chronic fatigue syndrome. It was 1986. I was full-time graduate school, full-time working, and I was exhausted. And I went to the doctors. I sat in this room with this woman after all these tests, and she said to me, I've got good news for you. There's nothing wrong with you. Well, I wanted to jump across the desk and kill her. I said to her, I can't lift up my arms and wash my hair. I can't walk upstairs. I can't sleep. And you're telling me there's nothing wrong with me? And she said to me, well, maybe you need to see a psychiatrist. I was really hurt by the whole system. I really got that my answers were not going to be there. A good reason why I was divorced was because I had chronic fatigue. I was not available to my husband. He was a physicist. I said to him one time about the energy in the body. He says, the body doesn't have any energy. You know, it's like I was fighting it on a couple of different levels while I was trying to heal myself. Todd credits Ayurveda with helping her overcome many serious health issues. It took me four years to get to Ayurveda. I did acupuncture, I did all kinds of alternative things. I was a yoga teacher and I was a psychotherapist and I had to keep my practice going and I needed to support myself. So I dragged myself into these classes and pretended like I was fine. When Todd learned about Ayurveda, she made an appointment to see noted Ayurvedic physician Vasant Laud. So I went down to his clinic in Albuquerque and when I got into Dr. Ladd's office, I just sat there and cried for a half hour. And he said to me, you're crying for the whole world. And I felt, this is true. We don't know these answers to things. We need help. And I just felt like I was in the right place. There's no getting around it if you've got an open mind that this is the best way to work with anything. It's very nurturing and it's very satisfying and it's very revealing. There's a lot of simple and yet very sophisticated information. But I remember a friend saying to me, you're so serious about this. I said, you would be too if it was a matter of life or death because it felt like death to me. I had no energy. Todd describes how her dinacharya, or daily routine, sustains her. My daily routine has changed a bit since I've gotten older. I really don't like to leave the house now until at least 10 o'clock because I need that time to do my practice. Before I even get out of bed, I do pranayama because I have COPD. I'm afraid of advancing, and I think because I do pranayama now, it has not advanced in eight years. I do nausea. 
I did Abhyanga every day with the brushing first. I was very serious about this. I would do a little bit of yoga, for instance, before I took my shower, just because I wanted to wait a little while to keep the oil on my body. Did maybe half hour, 45 minutes of yoga, and then I would have breakfast. I would love to be in a bathtub of oil, just hot oil. It just always felt so delicious. Going to bed, there was always this sort of routine also of oiling my feet, not oiling my head because then I'd have to wash my hair in the morning. I didn't want to wash my hair every morning. But I did it when I had to wash my hair the next day, put a shower cap on, and I'm usually asleep by 10. By the time I was diagnosed, my two daughters were in college. So they have learned from me Ayurveda, and they don't follow it necessarily, but they like kitchery. The whole family loves kitchery. I always have sliced ginger before I have my meals because I really want to take care of my digestive tract. That's one of the things I'm very serious about. I eat kitchery a lot. Todd isn't the only kitchery fan in her family. Her grandson gobbles it up. And he loves kitchery. That's his favorite meal. So it's great when he comes to my house, which is every Monday, we have dinner together and well, I always have kitchery with him. I, I eat eggs. I'm, I'm not a vegetarian. I was a vegetarian years ago before Ayurveda and I got anemic. So I do eat meat, not very much. I eat red meat in the winter. I eat salmon a lot. I eat sardines because I, I have osteoporosis. I eat a lot of vegetables. I don't eat that much fruit except in the summer. I love, you know, what's ripe in the summer. I eat apples in the winter and stuff like that, but I don't eat a whole lot of fruit. I do like sugar, so I try to minimize that. And I've taken Trifolov now for 30 some years, every night. And it's, you know, it's helped my, const my constipation. I don't have constipation anymore. I also have an Ayurvedic herbal formula that I take. So I combine my Ayurvedic knowledge. For Todd, Ayurveda is key to coping with the frustrations of aging. If I don't have my morning practice, I feel like my day doesn't have the same kind of flow. It regrounds me every morning. And I think particularly because of the aging vata symptoms. She lives with a litany of physical challenges. So now what I have is dermatitis in my head. So I've got this itchy scalp. I have seen myself with my hearing loss have poor balance. I've fallen twice. I broke my patella one day on the ice a year and a half ago. And so I'm very careful about walking and uh, on uneven surfaces. I had been diagnosed with an ulcer earlier on, you know, when I was in my 30s. So I had some digestive issues as well, which of course Ayurveda has helped completely. I don't have any digestive issues now. The other part of, of my yoga practice is grounding. You know, I like to do um, certain standing poses. I practice balancing poses all the time because that is my concern. I'm out of balance, that's how I've fallen. I've, every fall I've had has been careless. When I fell on the ice, I should have had my walking sticks. I almost brought them with me, I didn't do it. I fell tripping over a rug. That's why I don't have any of my oriental rugs in the house anymore, because I don't want to trip over them. So I feel like the balancing poses in yoga are very important for me and for seniors as well. I do have a sling that I hang from. and it stretches out the back. Painting, biking, classes, gardening, and family fill Todd's days, and even more self-care. Well, I've been meditating for 50 years. I think that mostly it's about qu being quiet and being still. I sit usually for 20 minutes, and I focus on my second chakra. I know Dr. Ladd has often said that we really don't need to meditate if we're present all the time. But it's hard to be present all the time, as we know. This is, I feel like that is my main spiritual practice. I want to be aware more during the day, every moment. 
I think when I meditate, I feel like my day makes a little bit more sense. Sometimes when I'm meditating, I think about things that have to be done that I might not have thought about before, and that's very helpful. I sometimes will get into regimes where I'll meditate in the morning and meditate in the evening before I go to bed for 20 minutes. But now in my Vata stage of life and my semi-retirement, I will take naps in the afternoon and so on. I don't feel like I need to meditate at night so much. I'm usually pretty quiet at night. I don't want to be on my computer just before I go to bed, for instance. So I do some reading and generally just really pretty quiet before I go to bed. Also, I think reading spiritual literature helps in terms of focusing on what's important in my life. Anything I pick up from Dr. Ladd can be helpful to me. I, mean, I can open up any page in the book and it seems like there's something in there for me. I do feel like I'm in love with Ayurveda. I'm in love with Dr. Ladd because he's the one that helped me the most. I have his picture on my refrigerator. I have my pic his picture in my studio, my art studio. I still have a very serious Ayurvedic practice and I feel absolutely so grateful for it because I don't know what I would do, how I would know how to take care of myself really without it.